Good morning, church. Happy Sunday. Have those Bibles. Have them open. Be in Luke chapter 2. It is literally the only place you're going to be this morning. We are going to slow the moment down, feast our eyes on the story of the birth of Christ, and really experience the magnitude of what God is doing this morning. When it comes to the magnitude of what God is doing, take note of this. Write down in your journal, your Bible, but it is simply this. This morning, 2020, in the midst of this holiday season, are you experiencing, are you seeing the magnitude of what God is doing this year? I feel like as people, the question of are we missing Christmas is assessed every year. And you might not, but I know my family, we will look at each other at least a dozen times every single year and just ask the question, man, were we so busy that we missed Christmas this year? Or we'll just make the comment, man, it just flew by. Oh, it's already December. Is there just two days until Christmas Eve? We will assess the fact of missing or not missing Christmas each and every year. Either we'll be too busy, we'll be spread out, we'll be spread thin, we'll be pulled in different directions, but there is a 50-50 chance that Christmas might come and go without us really experiencing the magnitude of the season. I was just telling my, my brother Stoney here that this morning we are not going to dive deep into any challenging, life-altering thoughts that you might not have ever tackled before. We're not going to dig deep into difficult, debative subjects that you might not ever have spoken or heard sermons about. We're going to read scriptures that you probably have heard many times in your life, but at the same time, what we are going to do, we are going to slow the moment down. Two weeks before Christmas, church, slow the moment down, and we are going to bask our eyes, feast on his scripture, see the magnitude of what God is doing this Christmas. Look at God's word in Luke chapter 2, starting with verses 8. God says in his word, Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came to haste around Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made wildly known the sayings in which were told of them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her hearts. Last verse. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. Are you seeing? Are you experiencing? Are you living in the moment, church, of the magnitude of what God is doing? This week's song, Silent Night, and it is my favorite Christmas song. Not only would I say it is my favorite Christmas song, it's many of yours. It is seen globally, globally, no matter what country you're in, as really the most famous Christmas song in history. Not only is it the most famous song in history, what's really amazing about our time this morning, Silent Night, was inspired by the verses that we just read. Men writing about a glorious God and some simple shepherds. 
silent night, O holy night. Shepherds quake at the sight. Glory stream from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing, Hallelujah. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. I love this song, as I said earlier. My wife and I have this agreement. My wife is amazing. She's an amazing wife, amazing mother. I'm very blessed to have her. But there's one thing that my wife really needs to function well, church, and that is sleep. She needs a good night's rest Monday through Sunday. And, and one thing that I'm lucky with is not only an awesome wife, but I'm lucky that I don't have to have a lot of sleep. I don't function that way that I have to have a good night's rest. I can wake up many times. I can go to bed late, wake up early, and function just fine. So one of the agreements that we made early on in parenting is that my wife was going to be amazing Monday through Sunday, but I would make sure that I woke up in the middle of the night to rock babies and help them get back to bed. Silent Night was the song that I sang with my youngest daughter, Lila. And the funny thing is, she wasn't born during the holidays. She wasn't born in November or December or January. Um, I was singing Silent Night during the summertime. But it is such a rhythm to it. It's such a nursery rhyme type song. And it's calm and it's peaceful. And, you know, it doesn't hurt that I know the song. <laughs> Not a lot of songs that I know by heart as well as I know Silent Night. So it has a special place to me in my heart. I would go into my daughter's room, I'd pick her up out of her crib, I would sit in the chair, and I would rock my daughter while constantly over and over and over singing Silent Night. Silent Night is, as I said, not just a special song to me, to you, but to most people. It is literally translated in 350 different languages. It is the third highest grossing single of all time in all genres of music. It has been sang by Bing Crosby and Sinatra and Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey and so on and so on and so on. There's amazing legends connected to Silent Night. In the midst of World War I, the story is, is that on Christmas Eve night, many of the troops from both sides of the war ceased fighting. No gunshots were fired, and they all stopped in a moment of peace, and they sang Silent Night in their own language. There's a lot of special stories and history behind this amazing, amazing song. There's a lot of wonderful, interesting facts of this song that was written literally over 200 years ago. It was composed in a small town inside of Austria in 1818. It was written by the pastor of a small church in Austria, 1818, by the name of Pastor Joseph Moore. And it was composed by Franz Gruber. Now, I love this story. I didn't know this story. I feel like I say this to you guys every week when it comes to these songs, and this is why I wanted to do this sermon series so much because I knew that I would just be inspired by what I didn't know. I didn't know the history behind Silent Night. The story is, is that this Pastor Moore was having a special Christmas Eve service in 1818. He didn't know what song to sing, and he didn't have musicians. It was a small church, but he wanted to make the night special. So he said, I'm going to use a poem that I wrote two years prior. He had seen a small play of children um, on the birth of Jesus Christ, and he was expired. And he literally sat outside as the snow came down, and he wrote this poem that was titled Silent Night. Well, he had this brilliant idea that Two years later on this special service that he was really excited about, that he was going to sit behind the organ, play the song the way that he wrote it, and sing the poem that he had intimately wrote about the birth of Christ two years prior. Four to five hours before the service, the story goes, he goes to the organ, he gets ready to go, he starts to play with no sound. He opens up the org, he looks at it, and many of the strings had been chewed through by mice. 
Pastor Moore was running out of time and he was running out of ideas. The sun was going down. People were getting dressed for service. It's about to be Christmas. He takes himself to the streets. He starts running. He's trying to find an idea. And he goes and he knocks at the door of one of his friends who's also a musician. He goes to Franz Gruber and he says, Sir, do you have any idea of what I could do to save this service? I can't play the organ. You don't have an organ or a piano to bring. I don't know what to do. I'm not musically gifted. Can you help me? And he says, I have no organ. I have none of these instruments. All I have is a lowly guitar. He said, well, that will do. He said, well, we haven't composed this yet. All you're giving me is a poem. So that in four to five hours, they had to come up with the idea. They had to comp compose the song. They had to learn it, and they had to perform it within hours of it being ready. And in that moment, as they all came together and the stars aligned and the people flooded the church, not only were they able to do a song that we all know throughout history, but they were given the greatest, most popular, well-known Christmas song in history. The gospel, the gospel is amazingly woven through this song. God's provision. The story, God's provision. Through the season, God's provision. Through the scriptures, God's provision. In the midst of creation, in the midst of the garden, the birth, the cross, the resurrection in heaven, in and out of Christmas, we see the gospel woven in the weight of God's provision. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. If Christmas, if Christmas is about gift giving, well then God bless the Lord for setting the tone in his amazing, undeserving, and unexpected ways. In Philippians 4, 19, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Are you seeing the magnitude of what God is doing this Christmas? As I was back in my office just a few days ago and I was preparing this message and I was doing some research, I was watching documentaries and I was reading the story, I was just amazed. I was amazed by the story, and what really amazed me was the simplicity and the beauty of, of how I saw the gospel in God's provision, but, but what really amazed me was the large gap between what these men were experiencing in this moment and what was actually happening. I want you to understand the moment. One man, small town, even smaller church, out of ideas and out of time. He was found a way, he found a way through a random friend of his with a guitar and no plan to not just perform a song that would bless this church of 40 people, but what was actually happening was they were performing the greatest song in Christmas history. With the gap between what was actually happening and what they experienced. Pastor Moore sat by himself. He wrote a poem about a graceful God and a simple shepherd. He sang it with one man and a simple guitar and was given the greatest song in our season. In so many ways, these two men were shepherds, weren't they? Like in so many ways, in the story of needing God's provision and experiencing one thing, but something actually greater in magnitude happening, they were very much the shepherds. Shepherds as in just good old boys working the night shift. I was thinking to myself about the pastor and the guitar player and then also these lowly shepherds in Luke chapter 2, and I thought to myself simply, Hunter, do you think that the shepherds woke up that morning realizing what they were going to experience that night? It's a simple thought. Like, did they wake up? Did they, they put their sandals on and kiss their wife goodbye and pack their lunch and tell their kids they'll see them later? 
Did they go into work that night thinking or realizing what they were going to experience? That they would actually be seeing the promised Savior, that they'd be a part of the biggest story in human history, that they would be written into Scripture. What's amazing about this song and what's amazing about this scripture, what's amazing about this moment is all of these individuals experienced was the silent in the night. And when God stepped forward, he brought the holy. Are you seeing the magnitude in God's provision? To see God's provision, what a gift. I want to go back and read a verse to you in 9 through 11. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And then the angel said to them, as we see said throughout the scriptures, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. How amazing would it have been to be those shepherds? How amazing would it have been for God's provisions to be literally pointed out to you by angels? Not that they were sitting with each other going, hey, what are you thinking that you just saw? No, no, no. It was pointed out to them by angels. Can you imagine being the shepherds? Unlike the pastor and unlike the guitarist, they were told the future glory. They were shown what their song would become, right? But even in that, you think they even understood the magnitude of it? Think, think about it for a minute. We understand that I'm sure that the pastor and Franz Gruber, that they didn't sit with each other and said, you know what, this was so awesome. I bet we go out and we become the third largest single in music history. Sure, they didn't say that to each other. Their minds could not even grasp such imagination, but with the shepherds, the shepherds literally being told by angels, seeing Christ with their own two eyes, being written into scripture, do you think they even still understood the magnitude of the moment? I don't think they probably did. I think for more and I think for Gruber, I think they toasted eggnog in the sanctuary that night and they laughed about the fact that they were actually able to pull it off, not realizing the magnitude of what God was going to do at that moment. These shepherds were told by angels, saw Christ with their own two eyes. And still, even in that, I don't think that our minds and our eyes can comprehend the magnitude of what God is doing in our life. I think we don't rest in the comfort enough in the reality of God's hand on everything that we're doing. I'm gonna say that back to you. I don't think that we have enough rest and comfort in the reality that God's hand is on everything we are doing. We, hit, we sit here on a normal Sunday and we hear that God is at work, and we hear that with complete comfort and passivity. The fact that the God of the universe is working in your life in ways that are unimaginable should move us to eyes closed, hands up, face on the altar, praise and worship. But like Christmas, we miss it. At Christmas, we miss it. We're busy and we're pulled and we're stretched. And we miss it. Sitting in the silent night and missing the beauty of the Holy One. Satisfied that we pulled it off, not realizing the amazing work that is actually taking place. How amazing this morning is the work of God in your life. How amazing. I told you, there is no life-altering moment or question that you have not been asked before in this morning's message. We're not diving deep or digging into concepts that you've never heard before. This is the birth of Jesus and the lowly shepherds speaking to angels, singing Silent Night. You know all of these things. All I'm asking is you, 
this morning is, have you missed it? Have you missed the simplicity of the magnitude of what God is doing? Have you taken comfort in the fact that even though you might not realize it, even though you can't fully see it, you are comforted that God is at work and doing something that is amazing and incredible in your life. More than challenge you this morning, I'm just, I'm just praying that you slow down. That you slow down two weeks before Christmas and that you see God's work through the scriptures, through the song, through the story, and through your life. Let's pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the season. We thank you for your son. We thank you for your provisions. God, so many times in my life, like the season that we are in, I miss it. I miss the moment, or I'm just, I'm just so simply satisfied. I'm satisfied with thinking that I see all that is happening, not imagining the glorious work which is actually happening in my life. Lord, open my eyes, open my heart, pull me closer to you, stir my affections. Let us all take a deep breath and praise you in the midst of the silent night, we praise you for being the Holy One. It's in your precious and holy name, the church says, amen.